I'm Mark Dolan. Join me at 11 on GB News for Headliners, in which I'll be joined by two of the UK's top comedians discussing tomorrow's papers. If it's an important story, we'll cover it, but we'll have some fun along the way. Headliners, the late night paper review that won't send you to sleep like the others will. Seven nights a week at 11pm on GB News. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deems & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Mark Stein. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm, join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prison? I, I don't believe in prison. Please. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <gasps> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Lawrence Fox, on GB News. Frank, fun, fearless, and sometimes serious, much as I love a Friday night punch up, what I really want is a battle of ideas. I want to look at things differently. I want to hear different voices and engage with your unique experiences. Every Friday at 7 p.m. on GB News. Hello, I'm Esther Rackvey. And I'm Philip Davis. Whether you're watching or listening on TV, online or on radio, we handpick the latest stories, debates and expert opinions for your weekend. So whether that's politics, news or showbiz, we've got it covered. Join us every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock on GB News. Join me every Sunday at 6 p.m. for Gloria Meets. In exclusive interviews, I'll be finding out who our politicians really are and what they really think. It's something that you would never want anyone to suffer. I didn't know what channels there were. B, I didn't think I'd be believed. I must have weighed about seven stone and I'm five foot eight. My instincts was to sort of cover this up. I mean, clearly that was a mistake. Join me every Sunday at 6 p.m. on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's news channel. Hello there, it's Eamon Holmes here from Breakfast on GB News. We're not just on your television and your screens, you know. We're on DAB plus digital radio, so you can listen to your favourite shows on the move. If you've not yet listened to GB News Radio, it's very simple. We're on your radio player and tune-in apps. On your smart speaker, phone or tablet, or online at gbnews.uk. Take us with you wherever you go. GB News Radio. You never have to miss a moment of the People's Channel. No spin, no bias, no censorship. I'm Dan Wooten tonight. After unimaginable tragedy in the channel with at least four people dying after a small boat loaded with migrants capsized in the freezing waters, I'll implore Prime Minister Rishi Sunak to be bold like Churchill and leave the ECHR immediately to break the stranglehold of cruel people smuggling gangs, stop the boats and save lives. That's in my digest next. Then my superstar panel weigh in. Tonight, I'm joined by Dawn Neeson, Adam Brooks and Ashley James. Then in the real world with Lee Anderson, Westminster's toughing talkers talking MP hits out at the left's desperation to keep our waters open. And under the rule of European judges, he's live in the studio with me at 9.35. As the country braces itself for more destructive fantasies from Harry and Meghan's Netflix disinformation campaign. It was a real kind of war against Meghan. And I've certainly seen evidence that there was negative briefing from the palace. So should the people decide if the Britain-hating Duke and Duchess of Delusion should be stripped of their royal titles? Nana Queer launches her campaign for a wait for it, Megxit referendum at 10.45. And while according to a bombshell poll, that vote wouldn't end well for the couple, indeed with their popularity plummeting among Brits, has the Sussexes' hate campaign against the royal family now backfired? Ex-Margaret Thatcher aide Niall Gardner, top Daily Mail columnist Sarah Vine duke it out with Joint Secretary of Stand Up to Racism, Wayman Bennett. That promises to be another fiery clash at 9.20. A 
as nurses prepare to abandon their patients and put lives at risk by walking out for the first time in history, should they be banned from ever striking again? That's up in debate at 10.30. Elsewhere, as human rights hypocrite Gary Lineker now takes a swipe at the World Cup's next co-host. Pretty much every country, including our own, has got issues. And we're off to America in four years' time, uh, with Canada and Mexico, but obviously America's an extraordinarily racist country. So is Loud Mouth Lineker becoming a global embarrassment for Britain? And will the BBC ever stop her mouthing off? Self-proclaimed Chief Gammon June Slater. She's fired up on this at 9.50+. Plus, Will Brexit the movie be coming soon to a cinema near you? Top Tory Spartan Marc Francois reveals all on his passion project at 10.20. We'll have tomorrow's newspaper front pages for you and a brand new Greatest Britain and Union Jackass name too. This is Dan Wilson tonight. Let's go. My Digest coming up in just a moment. You know how we do things. The news first on GB News. Here's Polly Middlehurst with the headlines at nine. Dan, thank you. Good evening. Our top story on GB News tonight. The six-year-old boy who was hospitalised after falling into an icy lake in Solihull at the weekend has died, meaning four children in total lost their lives in the tragic accident. The little boy had been in a critical condition since being rescued from the icy waters of Babs Mill Lake in West Midlands. Police said they couldn't comprehend the enormity of the pain the families must be feeling, but added further searches of the lake have now been called off. A prolific offender who murdered a law graduate in East London in June has been sentenced to life in prison and ordered to serve a minimum of 38 years behind bars. Jordan McSweeney, who'd only been released from prison nine days before he killed Zara Alina, pleaded guilty to her murder. He refused to leave his cell, though, for court sentencing, saying he didn't want to watch video evidence of his actions. McSweeney was caught on CCTV following other women before attacking the 35-year-old as she walked home from a night out in Ilford. After sentencing, Miss Alina's aunt said the family live with a profound loss. Zara's life was senselessly and brutally crushed. And today, like every other day, we live with the horror she was forced to face. Zara was the light, the warmth, the bird song, the laughter in our family. We live with a profound loss each day. And each day we are destroyed a little more. Sarah Atlena's aunt talking outside the Old Bailey earlier on today. Now, a search operation in the English Channel is expected to be called off about now after a small boat capsized in the early hours of this morning, resulting in the deaths of at least four migrants. 48 others were rescued and GB News was told others may still be missing, having fallen overboard. Around half of Britain's rail lines closed today as RMT members staged their second day of strikes across the country. Thousands of workers at Network Rail and 14 other train companies walked out, leaving some parts of the UK with no train services at all. It's part of a long-running dispute over pay, jobs and conditions and after the RMT rejected an offer of a 5% pay rise this year with another 4% next year. In Qatar, France have just won their semi-final match against Morocco. Theo Hernandez's volley gave France the lead after five minutes. Morocco then suffered an injury blow as captain Romain Sais limped off in the 21st minute. Mbappe's second-half shot deflected into the path of Randall Colomuani for a tap-it to book their place into the final. The defending champions will now take on Argentina on Sunday. You're up to date on TV, online and DAB Plus Radio. You're with GB News, part two now of Dan Wooten tonight. <music> A 
Another day of unimaginable tragedy in the English Channel as the despicable people smuggling gangs continue their brutal and soulless transportation of human beings, mostly young male economic migrants, treating them like cattle and dangling the prospect of a life of crime in the UK. The heartless lefty organisations predictably and shamefully continue to blame the government for refusing to adopt a Labour-style open borders policy. Like Amnesty International's Steve Valdez Simmons, who immediately used the human tragedy to advance his globalist position, deploying a press release claiming the Prime Minister's remarks this week about people escaping persecution somehow acting illegally or cheating the system are at the heart of this problem, showing how the government prefers to scapegoat desperate people rather than assist them. What a sick misrepresentation of what's going on. The only way, the only way to stop the deaths on the channel is to stop the boats, making it clear to anyone willing to risk their life by boarding that they will be processed offshore and therefore smashing the business model of the people smugglers. As the Home Secretary Suala Braverman made abundantly clear today, that's why breaking the stranglehold of the gangs enabling these crossings is the humane thing to do. Mr Speaker, these are the days that we dread. Crossing the Channel in unseaworthy vessels is a lethally dangerous endeavour. It is for this reason, above all, that we are working so hard to destroy the business model of the people smugglers, evil, organised criminals who treat human beings as cargo. As the Prime Minister told the House only yesterday, it is not cruel or unkind to want to break the stranglehold of the criminal gangs who trade in human misery and who exploit our system and our laws. He was right. This morning's tragedy, like the loss of 27 people on one November day last year, is the most sobering reminder possible of why we have to end these crossings. The left will, as ever, attempt to exploit the tragedy to end any debate on the illegal migrant invasion of our southern border. Whereas I believe such a horrific event makes it even more important that minds are focused on what I declared to be a national emergency well over a year ago now. The pressure is now going on Prime Minister Sunak to be brave and bold like Churchill by leaving the ECHR, an organisation with a noble cause that has now been twisted to make control of our borders nigh on impossible. Thank you, Mr Speaker. After the Second World War, Winston Churchill sent British Conservative lawyers to help to draft the European Convention on Human Rights, and that's something that we can be proud of in this country. But in an age of mass migration, the ECHR is now limiting our ability to control our borders. So in light of the tragedy in the Channel this morning, does the Prime Minister agree he should do as Churchill did? draft a new framework for refugees and human rights, including legal routes. But one way or another, and if necessary alone, we must be prepared to leave the ECHR. Tory MP Danny Kruger there expressing the growing momentum within the Conservative Party to leave the ECHR. We know Suella wants to do it. And today, Boris Johnson and Priti Patel both backed a 10-minute rule bill from ex-Tory Minister Jonathan Gullis to sideline ECHR when it comes to deportation flights to Rwanda. Now, ultimately, that bill was defeated in Parliament. However, MPs would be wise to remember that we ignored the ECHR when they wanted the UK to give the right to vote to convicted criminals in prison. And this afternoon, at the Joint Committee on Human Rights, Deputy PM Dominic Raab did reveal that Number 10 were keeping an open mind. Your position on staying in the Convention? Well, it is, look, the government's position is very clear. Um, uh, we rule nothing out. Uh, nothing is off the table for the future. Depending on the situation we find ourselves in, give the ebb and flow of the approach Strasbourg has taken, I don't think it's responsible for the government uh, to rule things uh, out. Leaving the ECHR may not be palatable to the woke mainstream media, but we must ignore them again to stop people smuggling gangs, putting even more lives at risk. To respond now, my superstar panel, 
former editor, current columnist at the Daily Star newspaper, Dawn Neeson, the businessman and activist, Adam Brooks, and the broadcaster, Ashley James. Adam Brooks, we've got to leave ECHR, don't we, to avert more of these tragedies and also to control our borders. Look, it's, it's a national emergency, Dan. Um, we have to do what we can uh, to solve this. And I think it's, if it wasn't so serious, it would be laughable that we're shackled by foreign judges and, and foreign courts and we, we're not able to defend our borders or solve a crisis on our own, you know. Um, what happened today is, is a tragedy and my, my thoughts go out to the families of those lost, but we've got to stop this happening. And the, the only way is to leave the ECHR uh, and amend our law so our system cannot be gamed like it has been. And that, that is what is happening. No other, you know, no other country in Europe is allowing so many Albanians to, to claim asylum or gain their slavery laws. Something has to happen, Dan, and it has to happen fast. And I've got no confidence at all in Rishi Sunak. He's U-turned on everything that he promised in the summer through the leadership campaigns. Why should I believe that he's going to tackle this now? I think it's empty words, uh, and I don't believe it will be solved. Because, Dawn Neeson, the issue that I have is that Rishi Sunak presented quite a good case yesterday in Parliament, but it's all well and good to talk about mm. the Rwanda scheme. But while we remain a member of the ECHR, I don't see how we can get the planes going. Uh, well, we can. I mean, the ECHR, it's guidance. You don't have to do what they say. Unfortunately, our courts then use their ruling to fight that thing. Now, if we go back to the original Rwanda flight, 99 people were on that flight. Only one person was taken off that flight with the ECHR ruling. The others were already taken off with our own ruling. So I'm not sure it'll make that much difference. The problem you've got with the ECHR is as soon as migrants land in this country, then can then claim asylum. Australia cracked this problem by not letting migrants land in yeah. Australia, processing them on an offshore yeah. island. It stopped the... But they weren't contained by... Exactly. This, like is the, this is the this is the, the, the counterbalance to this argument. Or a system in our own country. Yes. No, this is the counterbalance to this argument. Um, it worked in Australia. It stopped the trade in illegal mm -hmm. um, people It'll smuggling. Stop the deaths. Overnight. And that's the important thing. And as you said so so rightly, I mean, you've got to feel that so many people, you know, we don't know, we, we think it's for, it might be more, have lost their lives. We feel for those people, for their families. And also the people that are incredibly brave and rescued them as well. I mean, it's a fishing trawler. I mean, the people on that boat, what they must have experienced, it must have been horrific. So it has to stop. What Rishi Sunak has said, it's medium to long-term solution. We need to do something now. We have to find, I think, working not just with the EU but with Europe, there has to be a way that we can stop this problem. It's not just us that are suffering, remember. But look, we've got, we've got Brits that are freezing and hungry in their own homes. Well, yeah, I know. We've, and we're look, spending two billion right. pounds But we've got economic year. migrants, and the Albanian officials even admitted these are economic migrants, and, and they're being put up in hotels uh, yeah, and fed. At a cost of two billion pounds a year, it's, it's mm. absolute insanity. Ashley James, you don't think that we should leave the ECHR, so presumably that means these human tragedies continue? No, nobody wants human tragedies. And by the way, nobody wants people to be risking their lives getting onto dinghies. And What's nobody wants smugglers. I think it's very important to remember that only countries that have left the ECHR are Belarus and Russia. Do we really want to be in the same camp as them? I think that would really be well, We're not in the same camp then because we have me. strong human rights laws. The ECHR protects... In through our parliament. ...protects us, not just immigrants. It protects us sovereign. and our human rights. And it was set up by Winston Churchill and British lawyers Why, to protect citizens from overbearing governments okay, who want to take away solution? our human rights. What's your solution? Safe and legal routes. Uh, Tory so throw MP, open the borders? No, nobody's saying that, not even Labour saying that. And Tory MP <laughs> Tim um, Loughton did a really brilliant job of getting Swella Braverman to admit that at the moment there are no safe and legal routes. So if you want... There are, depending on where you're coming from. No, That's not if true. You're if you're Ukraine, coming from the Ukraine, you're from Ukraine or Syria Afghanistan, or Afghanistan... Hong Kong. Let's, let's yeah. also remember that there are genuine asylum seekers that need genuine help. Yeah, and the fact they Most aren't being these helped... Do you know do how many not. asylum seekers had their applications processed last year? 4%. That is not their fault, their fault of migrants. That is the fault so, but, but, of Tory but actually, policy. I, I just, no, but actually, I just want to nail down on what you're actually proposing. 
Because when you say you want more safety... She's not the Home route, Secretary. Well, no, but this is the opinion <laughs> of the left who want to throw the open the left and the, the right, borders by to the way, 100 million folk. No, the who, left who, and the who, right who all want smuggling gangs to stop. They all want people escaping war to not have to risk their lives on diggies. And I'm sorry, but what is a more effective deterrent than fear of death? Last night, I was cold and I was under a duvet with my heating on. Can you imagine the state you have to be in? Reports coming that they're in T-shirts, on dinghies, in the Most of them dark. are economic migrants no, they're not. that have paid 7,000. No, 5,000, and yeah, oh, it's... Oh, sorry. Yeah, but... It's absolutely atrocious that uh, these smuggling gangs are There are, are Brits that would like 5,000 in their bank accounts at the moment. They can't afford to just go and give yeah, a people smuggling Yeah, of course they will, but it's not people pounds. escaping war's fault. No. And this is what an war absolute is in tragedy. Yeah, but France. Like, the people that were, on, were the people that were on the boats. They, they weren't Albanian. From what we are hearing, they are Afghans, Syrians okay. from Iran. Well, we know we know that there have been 12,000 arrivals at least from Albania this year alone. Probably yeah, much more, can I because all of these people arrive without any form of identity, without any form of documentation. Everybody wants the asylum process. Form of documentation. Everybody wants the bad ones, whatever you want to call them, to be sent back. But at the moment, our system well, is failing refugees. to me, Ashley, it sounds refugees. like your solution is throwing open and our borders. By the way, when you're, when you're saying the left, it's not the left, it's human rights lawyers, it's the senior Church of England that called it an immoral policy, the wrong very policy. Lefty. They're, they're left, it's, then. Well, the church. The church. Oh, yes, the church they are. Yes. 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 yes, look at the arts. Yeah. Prince yeah. Charles yeah. Yeah. said it's appalling. Ashley look. James, Adam Brooks, Dawn Neeson, my superstar panel, and they are here all night. But still to come... As for people, as we know, tragically lose their lives in the channel, Westminster's toughest talking MP hits out at the left's desperation to keep our borders open and under the rule of European judges. The Real World with Lee Anderson coming up at 9.35. But first in the clash, as Harry and Meghan's popularity plunges, has their hate campaign against the royal family backfired? Ex-Margaret Thatcher aide Niall Gardner, star Daily Mail columnist Sarah Vine, and joint secretary of Stand Up to Racism, Wayne and Bennett, duke it out. But I want to know what you think on this down at gbnews.uk. You can vote in our poll there too. The results and the clash coming up straight after the break. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deems & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Mark Stein. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. Here on GB News Live, we'll be keeping you in the picture, finding out what's happening across the country and finding out why it matters to you. We'll have the facts fast with our team of reporters and specialist correspondents. Wherever it's happening, we'll be there from 12 noon on TV, radio and online. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. We are GB News, the people's channel. Why not take us home with you by visiting the GB News shop at gbnews.store. You'll find all the official merchandise, a really good present actually for yourself, your friends or your family. We ship across the UK mainland at no extra cost. GB News, the people's channel. Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate, and I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. You've been cancelled. Join the club. Oh, my goodness, mate. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints. We're over a drink. We have a civilised conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. Monday to Thursday on GB News, it's Bev Turner today from 10 a.m. We're going to be here for you, our GB News family, to keep you up to date, but also make you smile. The guy went from puberty to adultery. <laughs> and I can't wait to bring a few of my own opinions. I have no time for cultural totalitarianism. <laughs> we'll engage in passionate, but always polite debate with your thoughts and opinions at the center of it all. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Hi there, it's Stephen and Anne. At breakfast from 6am, you'll always be caught up with everything you need to know. The latest headlines, opinions and debates. We'll bring you the good news and the bad, but most of all, we're here for you. Remember, send in your views and let us know what you would like us to talk about. That's because we're your news channel. And every morning at 6am, it's breakfast on GB News. 
Join me every Sunday at 6 p.m. for Gloria Meets. In exclusive interviews, I'll be finding out who our politicians really are and what they really think. It's something that you would never want anyone to suffer. I didn't know what channels there were. B, I didn't think I'd be believed. I must have weighed about seven stone and I'm five foot eight. My instincts was to sort of cover this up. I mean, clearly that was a mistake. Join me every Sunday at 6 p.m. on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Hello, I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11pm, where I'll be joined by two of the country's top comedians as we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it, I guarantee, but we'll also have some fun along the way. That's GB News Headliners at 11pm. We won't put you to sleep, unlike some of the other paper review shows out there. So join us, 11pm, seven nights a week. Time now for The Clash. And as we brace for more spiteful and unfounded swipes at the royal family in volume two of Harry and Meghan's Netflix atrocity tomorrow, they've slapped us with another trailer and it's the most disgraceful piece of propaganda yet. It was a real kind of war against Meghan and I've certainly seen evidence that there was negative briefing from the palace against Harry and Meghan to suit other people's agendas. Meg became this scapegoat for the palace, and so they would feed stories on her, whether they were true or not, to avoid other less favorable stories being printed. You would just see it play out. Like a story about someone in the family would pop up for a minute, and they go, we gotta make that go away. But there's real estate on a website homepage. There is real estate there on a newspaper front cover and something has to be filled in there about someone royal. It's this barrage of negative articles about the breakdown of the relationship with her father it was the final straw in a campaign of negative, nasty coverage about her. But while the Sussexes may think their deranged media crusade is hurting the monarchy, the biggest casualty is actually, well, <laughs> themselves, as indicated in a bombshell new YouGov poll. It reveals that around the release of the doc, Harry's popularity plummeted by a whopping 13 points, his joint lowest score since royal favourability polling began in 2011, with Meghan's likability nosediving by seven points since November. Only Prince Andrew polling lower now. So what do you think? Has the Sussexes' hate campaign against the royal family backfired? Dan at GBNews.uk, vote in our poll at GB News. But to help you make up your mind, I'm joined by star Daily Mail columnist Sarah Vine, former advisor to Margaret Thatcher, Niall Gardner, and joint secretary of Stand Up to Racism, Wayman Bennett. Sarah Vine, I think this has been a spectacular own goal by Harry and Meghan. Do you agree? Well, they've just come up, they've come across as, I, I think their timing is really bad, actually, because the Queen has only just died. And I think also there are quite a lot of serious problems in the world and their sort of tiny violin um, complaining endlessly about, you know, not you know, just, you know, stuff that for most people would seem, you know, really quite lovely, a lovely lifestyle has sort of not has, you know, it hasn't really done them any favours and they do seem really bitter and twisted and I think quite a lot of people understand that maybe they wanted to move away from royal life and I think in particularly in the case of Meghan I've always felt that it must have been really difficult for her because you know she's she's an American and that's tricky because you know the royal family is not an American thing and it's not the same as Kate you know she grew up in a different environment I mean it's it's a harder thing to get your head around so I can see how it would have been a real culture shock for her and I can see how it would have been difficult for her and I think people have sympathy for them and they understand that perhaps they decided that it's not the life they want to lead and they want to go somewhere else and they want to do something else and that's all fine the problem I think is this relentless trashing and bitching about the other royals and I think that makes it feel very bitter and twisted and that's not a good look. And Niall Gardner, so much of this is not based on fact. I mean, you have actually described Harry and Meghan as being responsible for the biggest disinformation campaign of the past decade. Uh, yes, Dan, thanks very much for having me on the show uh, today. And I have to say that, uh, as, you, as you mentioned, uh, Dan, 
this is a, a massive uh, disinformation campaign by uh, Meghan and Harry. It's an absolute uh, disgrace. It is a hate-filled campaign against the British monarchy, also deeply insulting, I think, to the British people uh, as well. Uh, and Meghan and Harry uh, are hugely uh, privileged individuals, very wealthy individuals. Uh, they're reportedly being paid up to $100 million uh, for this Netflix docu-drama. Uh, and they are basically enriching themselves using royal titles while attacking the royal family, attacking the British uh, people, uh, and all of the lies and disinformation coming out over the course of, of the last uh, couple of weeks or so on this Netflix documentary, uh, I think is absolutely appalling. This is a massive disinformation campaign. They have no evidence whatsoever for all of these ludicrous accusations. Uh, and we are dealing with two immensely narcissistic individuals who care nothing at all uh, for the royal family, who care nothing at all for the British people, uh, and they are using their royal titles essentially to try and launch attack after attack upon the British monarchy. Uh, and I do think the, the late Queen would have been absolutely appalled by the behaviour mm. of both uh, Meghan and Harry here. Uh, Wayman Bennett, you, you don't think this has backfired at all on Harry and Meghan, despite that polling? Why? Well, I, I think many British establishments, when faced with the question of racism, uh, go into denial or, as the previous speaker said, outright lies. Um, it may be difficult for people to understand the multiracial, uh, multi-heritage family, um, particularly the royal family, which hasn't changed for centuries, um, being confronted with this. Um, I'm not surprised that raising problems that exist both in the family and the institution has caused serious problems here. And I think um, if you look at the reality, is that if you say that you're being racially discriminated against an institution, it's very difficult for people to accept that. Rather, what they would like to say, it's not, that it's a lie. One, one thing people have to understand is what's on trial here is whether people can accept the 21st century, that we're going to have a multiracial, multi-heritage um, uh, royal family. Internationally, in the very countries in which Britain wants to retain the royal family, Canada, Australia, and uh, many, of the, uh, many of the former colonies, people are looking at this as exposing racism inside Britain itself. Wait, the denial I mean, I isn't ask, helpful. Wait, wait a minute, can I just ask uh, what evidence you have uh, that the royal family is racist? Because I certainly haven't seen Harry and Meghan produce any evidence. Maybe they will oh. tomorrow. But I haven't seen any so far. Look, I understand that um, in this country, the, you know, if you raise the, you know, former Prince Philip, the statements that he raised about people from other countries were clearly racist. They weren't challenged by the British press because um, the tradition inside this country is not... Oh, to, come on, to his gaffes were but, challenged but, every but, single time. But, his gaffes were but, challenged but, but, every time. My point, I'll finish my point. It must be very difficult if you're in a family which is both black and white to stomach racism. You know, this government itself went through a very careful um, report to say that racism didn't exist inside this country. Some of the people that you've got up there from the Daily Mail, they've been taken to court by... Um, by Prince Harry themselves, because uh, of threats of investigation into their into their in, into their Sarah Vine, you lives, want to come right? in there? Which is, which Sarah, is. But, so what I'm trying to say is that it's, they have a vested interest. They have a vested interest in denying no, the claims. No, the claims of Wayman. Wayman, you've made your point, Wayman. Let Sarah court. respond. I have not been taken to court. I would also like to add that when Prince Harry the Daily Mail said some very racist things when he was younger mm. and dressed up as a Nazi and made lots of other racial slurs that we were very hard on him. I don't think this is just about racism. I think that the, the notion that just because you disagree with the way person behaves makes you racist if that person is a person of colour is silly. It's not true. People don't dislike Meghan because of her colour. They dislike Meghan because of the way she has behaved. And that is a very different thing. It's not necessarily Look. racism. Look. You cannot but describe... Gaslighting people and pretending that racism doesn't exist is a British no, tradition. I mean, it's not, I, and I'm sorry. I mean, I, I'm not surprised that the panel no. itself is but up here telling people that racism, that the, Brit the royal family does not have racism. Right. In, 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 well, no, no, only like, last week, somebody was rebuked 
for how they spoke to um, somebody from Lady Manhattan. Susan Hussey. Uh, there's a lot Lady of denial Susan about Hussey. this. But well, well, I don't, I don't denial. believe, and I don't believe that what Lady anything. Susan Hussey did was racist. Look at the speed of action that the palace took with that. Oh, look, Within look, look, look. hours, can, she had... Can, can I just say, less, but also right look at the reaction say, of much cares, of the media that went into denial and talked about her yeah. age and how it was appropriate. We're being dragged into the 21st century mm. with these families, Wait, whatever Wait, it given, is. Given you're, here to exposed, in, Wait, it, given you're here to fit in Harry and Meghan, though, Sarah's just made a very pertinent point. Uh, the British press and the British public absolutely celebrated the union of Harry and Meghan. I remember that time. I remember the day of their wedding. The entire country stopped. It was actually one of the happiest days that this country has had in a very, very long time, certainly since uh, the London 2012 Olympics. What happened is that Meghan was accused multiple times behind the scenes by royal staff, by courtiers, of bullying. She was reprimanded by the Queen, the late Queen. She was reprimanded by Kate Middleton. You don't seem uh, to think uh, at uh, all that Meghan's behaviour is responsible for the change the in the basis. tone of the coverage. Look, I, I'm not defending the behaviour of, as you said, very privileged people. What I am saying is the institution itself, the monarchy, the idea that it's beyond reproach, that in the 21st century, I mean, you have to understand that the majority of people questioning that there's all, font, they're their font of all honour, right? We, there's a generations of people that saying that institutionally it no longer fits. But the thing is, the Wayman, but the thing is, Wayman, you're you're, you're making a comment it, that is factually incorrect. I mean, I can racism. point to loads of columns that Sarah Vine has written and that I have written that have held the royal family to account on many issues. If it wasn't for the British press, Prince Andrew would never have been exposed for his friendship with Jeffrey Epstein. So, Sarah uh, Vine, uh, I just think this uh, is uh, a completely unfair it, representation. Right? If any one of us face Wayman, let Sarah that respond. It's they would be in prison, right? So the fact that they're faced It would with never have been exposed without the British action. press, Wayman. Is it there? would never have been action? exposed without the British press. Sarah, you come in. No, I just think it's unfair to say that the British, that the British press have focused on Meghan because of her colour. It has nothing to do with that. Straight out of Compton. You know, we've been, we've been much harder. We've do you think, any, do you think Kate Winslet exactly. would have been called straight out and, of Compton? Sorry? Come on. Let's, let's be honest. There's a level of racism within the British press, and it's been exposed. Rubbish. It's uncomfortable. It has not. But it has not. Evidence. You're talking rubbish. We need to get over Find it. me what? the evidence, Look, because one headline talking about the location of where Meghan lived is not proof of racism. Niall Garner, do you want to come in? Yes, if, if, I, if I could, if I could uh, uh, add here that uh, I think uh, Sarah's absolutely right. That's all people uh, are saying. The, Brit the British press are not, are not racist. Thank God for the British press holding people in tremendous power and privilege to, to account. Uh, the British press does a wonderful job Look, there. Also, uh, this idea uh, that the royal family uh, oh, is come racist on. is complete uh, utter, uh, utter nonsense. I, I beg well. to differ. This is just, this is just no good fact. Uh, uh, listen, uh, we've had prime ministers describe Muslim mind. women as and, bank robbers. You know, the, right? the criticism of Meghan Markle has nothing at all to do with her race. In fact, I've spoken to a lot of Americans here in the United States. I'm based here in Washington. But many Americans who are absolutely appalled by Meghan Markle's behaviour, Americans of all races. I've not spoken to a single American who actually thinks that Meghan Markle actually uh, is right in her condemnation of the royal family. In fact, oh, she's come under very heavy I'm fire here in the, in the United circles. States, as she has done I, I think in the I'm United Kingdom. In, indeed, all indeed. Heritage, and all, of these, the all of these claims about racism is complete okay. utter, what people complete feel in America. America. OK, thank you so much. It's been a spirited debate. Thank you very much for having it. Former advisor to Margaret Thatcher, Niall Gardner, Joint Secretary of Stand Up to Racism, Wayman Bennett, and Star Daily Mail columnist Sarah Vine. So who do you agree with? Has Harry and Meghan's Netflix hate campaign against the royal family backfired? Earl on Twitter says, don't believe what the mainstream media says. Public opinion for these two is at an all-time low. The question is, do they care? Sue on Twitter says, I think the series has only backfired with normal people. I'm sure the woke brigade still worship them. And from Amanda, I don't think they care either way. When they're being paid millions, they're laughing all the way to the bank. And your verdict is now in. 91% of you agree that Harry and Meghan's hate campaign against the royals has backfired. Just 9% of you say that it hasn't. 
Coming up, as Gary Lineker takes a swipe at the World Cup's next co-host, the USA, is the human rights hypocrite becoming a global embarrassment for Britain's self-proclaimed chief gammon June Slater weighs in at 9.50. But up next, as Gareth Southgate weighs up his future as England manager, is it racist to suggest his successor should be English? Westminster's toughest talking MP gives his take in the real world of Lee Anderson coming up. Caroline, we are GB News, and we'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you for bringing us your conversations, for helping our great nation find its voice. We are here for you on radio, television, and online across England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. It's not the BBC, you know, you actually get your facts right. We are proud to be GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. Join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prison? I, I don't believe in prison. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. My name's Tom Harwood and join me 9.30am every weekday for The Briefing, your one-stop shop for everything you need to know about what's going on in politics today. I wonder if this is a deal that might need to be like the biscuits in this factory, twice baked. Is there not an opportunity here to win out against the extremes? Tom Harwood, GB News. What are you going to do about it? Things should have been done differently and they, and they certainly are being done differently. Don't miss it. The Briefing with me, Tom Harwood, 9.30 Monday to Friday on GB News. Every morning from 6 o'clock, we'll wake you up with GB News Breakfast with all the stories you didn't know from the night before. So whether it's serious news, entertainment or your own views from all over our great nation, we're here to kick off your day with a smile. And the national media should be reflecting and reporting what's happening here. You will notice the northwestern accents. <laughs> Whether you're with us on TV, radio or online, every morning it's breakfast from 6am. Hope you can join us. We are GB News, right across the nation. You can get us on television, on radio, on digital. We're absolutely everywhere. Amazing! You see, amazing! You remind me of me and the European Parliament. <laughs> but here's the most important bit. We are not part of the mainstream establishment. We think and speak just like you do. We are the People's Channel. Magnificent. That's really, really thoughtful. Come and join us on GB News, the People's News Channel. Join me, Nana Akue, Saturday and Sunday afternoons on GB News. Expect fiery debate and passionate discussion as me and my panel tackle some of the biggest topics hitting the headlines. It's a place for everyone's opinion. No one gets cancelled, but no one gets an easy ride. <laughs> oh, she's on it today! I, I, I... Be ready for conversations that are fierce, frank and, of course, fun every Saturday and Sunday afternoon from 4pm on GB News, the People's Channel. We are GB News, the people's channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. It's time for The Real World with Lee Anderson, Westminster's toughest talking MP. And stopping the channel boats remains top of the government's agenda after at least four died in that horrific capsizing of a vessel containing more than 40 migrants overnight. Hours earlier, our red wall Rottweiler brought the real world to Parliament <laughs> by addressing Rishi Sunak and the PM's five-point plan to stop the boats. Called The Real World. And in The Real World, people know that the vast majority of people travelling here on small boats are not genuine refugees. So the public get it, even the Albanian ambassador gets it, we all get it. Prime Minister, when will the opposition get it and realise that the vast majority that are coming over are not genuine asylum seekers? Yeah. 
Well, uh, Mr. Speaker, my honourable friend is a, a fantastic champion on this, this issue, and he's absolutely right. We on this side of the House are on the side of the British people. Oh. Then today, Lee supported a defeated members' bill from colleague Jonathan oh. Gullis, also backed by Boris Johnson and Priti Patel, that would allow us to bypass the ECHR and kickstart Rwanda deportations immediately. Now, Dominic Raab has made headlines by saying, Lee, uh, today, this evening, that Number 10 hasn't ruled out leaving the ECHR. But when Sunak was quizzed about it uh, numerous times yesterday, he wasn't prepared to commit at all or even or even say it's an option yeah it's, it's a touchy subject Dan at the moment within with our own party and why parliament. it just is there's, there's so many members of our own party um, on those back benches that are just so against leaving the ECHR from day one I've always said I've been quite adamant about it that if it means leaving the ECHR to get our own way to control our borders then we should do it I'm hopeful that the Bill of Rights and these new points that Rishi raised yesterday are, are sort of uh, get round that but if not Let's, let's leave it. I mean, what are we faffing about that? It's our own country. We should be able to protect our own borders. And if it means leaving the ECHR, well, let's just do it. Crack on. Well, yeah, indeed. And as your colleague Jonathan Gullis pointed out quite rightly, Sunak, in the summer leadership campaign, said that if it was necessary to leave the ECHR, he would. So what's changed? I think there's quite a few people in that leadership campaign, Dan, if we're honest, that uh, made certain promises. Yeah. That's just the nature of of politics. Look, nothing's off the table. As you've quite rightly said tonight, Dominic said something which is quite interesting and quite, that excites me a little bit. Look, this is the last chance saloon for us. We've got to sort this migrant crisis out. Look, nothing's off the table. And, you know, if it means leaving the ECHR, then, then so be it. But if we don't sort this out, you know, the party is on notice. I said this last week. If we don't sort this out, we've, we've got big problems come the next election because nobody will trust us on protecting our borders. Because, Lee, you wrote a very powerful column in the Mail on Sunday at the weekend... I did. Uh, ..making it clear that your support for the Conservative administration is conditional yeah. on the boats being stopped. Mm -hmm. So what's the alternative if they're not...? It, it's not just my support, Dan. It's, the, it's, the, it's the, uh, the five or six million people who voted Conservative for the first time at the 2019 general election. Their, their votes are conditional on, the, on us sorting, sorting this out. I sort of see myself as a little bit of a voice for the Red Wall voters, and if they're upsetting me, they're upsetting our voters in the Red Wall, so they need to sort this out or it's come the next election, I don't know where these voters are going. And so is that you saying that you would potentially consider leaving the Conservative Party for the decisions? No, it's not, Dan, because at the next election, I want to stand for the Conservative Party. I've got a but big... you want to win. I want to win and prove to the people who are in that place where I work, I, I'm not going to swear I nearly did then, but that place I work, which sometimes, or well, most of the time, is completely out of touch with the real world, I want to show them that what I've been saying and what I've been doing all along is the right thing. Yeah, indeed. And it's so important, Lee. And I think the thing that is really frustrating for me today, obviously what's happened is a yeah. real tragedy. Of course it is. But that's <clears throat> why stopping the boats is the humane thing to do, because stopping the boats also means stopping the deaths. Dan, you bang on the money. Look, these deaths are unfortunate. It, it makes me feel sick. Yeah. But let's hold our hands up. We spend too much time in that place blaming the evil people smugglers. It's our fault. It's parliaments, all parties in there. We've got the chance to stop this. We could, could have brought laws in. We're, we're there to protect our borders. We're not. So any deaths in the channel, we need to hold our hands up and apologise to the rest of the world because we're complicit in this. I really believe that. Mm. Indeed. So how how confident are you that the five points that Sunak outlined actually will make? Well, there's one thing in there, Dan, which I've been asking for since day one, and that's for anybody who arrives here illegally, whether that be on a small boat or in the back of a lorry, they should not be allowed to claim asylum. That's the pull factor, because people know if they get here illegally, it's almost impossible to send them back to the country of origin. If we get that right then there's no point in them coming. Yeah, indeed. And now, look, Lee, I had to ask you about this. Former Liverpool football star Jamie Garragher has made waves uh, with a column insisting that the next English manager, if it's not Gareth Southgate continuing the role, should be English. Yeah. Uh, but former Sky Sports presenter Richard Keyes confronted Garragher about it, calling the idea nonsense, and said that it bordered on racism. So yeah. who's right?
Well, I don't know what Jamie Carragher's talking about, about using the English word. He can't even speak English, Dan. I've, I've listened to him. Now, this is a man who goes around spitting on people in cars and that. Take notes on him. He's a bit of an idiot. He's a bit like Neville and Lineker. Uh, the moment the great British public start listening to these, these overpaid ex-footballers, then we've got real problems, real problems. Look, most people in the real world don't give a monkeys what nationality the English manager is. If the next English, English manager is an Eskimo... And he wins the World Cup, we'll all be jumping up and down and say what a great man he is. Or woman. Very true. And, uh, look, Lee, I wanted to finish with this because it's blown my mind this week. Uh, the attempt to rewrite <laughs> reality <laughs> continues with the Cambridge Dictionary updating its definition of a woman to include, quote, anyone who identifies as female regardless of their sex at birth. Have we reached the, the point of... No return. Well, happening. look here, Dan. I mean, the lunatics have taken over the asylum. They've infiltrated all swathes of society. But I will tell you this about my gender test. When I was born 55 years ago, the midwife looked at my dad and says, congratulations, Mr Anderson, you've got a baby boy. He didn't say congratulations, Mr Anderson. We'll let you know in about 18 years' time when he's made his mind up what sex is going to be, what you've actually had. It's complete nonsense, Dan, and like I say... In the real world, people are fed up with this nonsense yeah. that's being pumped into us every day. And it's quite dangerous, isn't it, given this is the Cambridge Dictionary. This is uh, one of those places that we turn, actually, to go with the facts and escape this sort of mad, woke mind virus, as Elon Well, I'm Musk telling you now, Dan, I said it on Twitter today, because you know I'm on Twitter. You're back. Uh, I'm Come back on Twitter. Yes. The, this dictionary is... I've done with dictionaries now. I'm going to go home and rip my dictionary up like I do with The Guardian <laughs> whenever I see one in the tea room and lob it in the bin. If, if, if you're out there listening, throw your dictionary away. <laughs> Lee Anderson. <laughs> Conservative MP for Ashfield, thank you so much, Lee. But coming up, as Meghan claims the royal family launched a media war against her, should the Sussexes put up or shut up by producing critical evidence? My superstar panel return in the media buzz. After 10, we'll have the first front pages then for you too. But first, as human rights hypocrite Gary Lineker takes a swipe at the World Cup's next co-host, the USA, is he becoming a global embarrassment for Britain? Social media sensation and self-proclaimed chief gammon June Slater. She's unleashed straight after the break. We're back in two. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At six, it's Deems and Co. Seven o'clock, Farage. At eight, join Mark Stein. And at nine, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. Here on GB News Live, we'll be keeping you in the picture, finding out what's happening across the country and finding out why it matters to you. We'll have the facts fast with our team of reporters and specialist correspondents. Wherever it's happening, we'll be there. From 12 noon on TV, radio and online. GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Hello, I'm Michelle Jubri, and you can join me every weekday, 6 till 7 on Jubes and Kerr. Me and my panel will get stuck right into the day's events. And I can tell you, in fact, I can warn you, expect some robust debates, some strong opinions and perspectives from both sides of the fence. It's about you at home as well. I love to read out all of your comments, or at least as many as I can. So join me, Michelle Jubri, Monday to Friday, 6 till 7 on Jubes and Kerr. We are GB News, the people's channel. Why not take us home with you by visiting the GB News shop at gbnews.store. You'll find all the official merchandise, a really good present actually for yourself, your friends or your family. We ship across the UK mainland at no extra cost. GB News, the people's channel. I'm Mark White. As GB News Home and Security Editor, I cover those key issues that are so important to you. Our authorities, our communities doing all they can to combat violent crime. With the public services under unbearable strain, why are we still failing to control our borders? Defence, the first priority of any government, has been continually hollowed out. Can we trust our politicians to protect the armed forces? Join me, Mark White, on GB News. We are GB News, right across the nation. You can get us on television, on radio, on digital. We're absolutely everywhere. Amazing! You see, amazing! You remind me of me and the European Parliament. <laughs> but here's the most important bit. We are not part of the mainstream establishment. We think and speak just like you do. We are the people's channel. Magnificent. That's really, really thoughtful. Come and join us on GB News, the people's news channel.
My name is Andrew Doyle. Join me every Sunday evening at 7 p.m. for Free Speech Nation. This is a show where we address current affairs and news stories of the week with the help of two wonderful comedian panelists. I brought in comics because I want to give it a lighter edge and also they work for less. See you there. Self-proclaimed Chief Gammon, June Slater, is tonight's outsider. Now, after his virtue-signalling coverage of the Qatar World Cup, multi-millionaire social justice warrior Gary Lineker is now gunning for the tournament's next co-host, the USA. Watch. Been out there a month. I'm wondering if you've sort of changed or how you think it's no, gone? Um, well, it's just not about me. It's just um, we pointed facts out at the beginning of the tournament. Those facts remain. So... Um... You know, lots of people were, were killed making, doing the stadiums. Yes, the stadiums are extraordinary. Pretty much every country, including our own, has got issues. And we're off to America in four years' time uh, with Canada and Mexico. But obviously, America's an extraordinarily racist country. So um, there's always issues. He just can't help himself, can he? Just weeks after being found guilty of breaching the BBC's impartiality guidelines, Gary's back on his soapbox and making a mockery of the Director General Tim Davey and his attempts to clean house once again. June Slater, uh, wouldn't it be great if he could just focus on the football for once, June, instead of making this outrageous claim that the USA is some sort of racist hellhole? Well, he's not a well man, is he? I've um, I've contacted my auntie Ivy actually for a vertigo tablets because he must be dizzy with all that virtue signalling from up on the high ground. <laughs> um, what I don't understand is, let me just get this right: uh, the southern border to America is teeming with migrants trying to get in, not trying to get out. They're not all going other way, saying, "Oh, don't come in." No idea how racist it is. They're trying to get in. And not long ago, he was, um, I think he tweeted about Meghan and Harry, you know, the Duke and Duchess of Whinge, um, how they did the right thing to go to America because we're all racist in Britain. Yet again, our southern borders are teeming with people, trying to get in, not trying to get out. Um, where does his thought process come from? I, I don't understand how we can say this, uh, especially with a, a nation, that the backbone of which is couldn't be more multicultural. People came from all over the world to Staten Island. Uh, one of the reasons there's a lot of unusual surnames in America is because they were processing that many people. As they were saying the surnames from different countries across the world, they wrote them down incorrectly. Um, there's racist problems in every pocket of the universe, and it's not necessarily all one-sided, as we've seen with other issues. But... What is Gary Lineker on? I mean, he's had a great career, represented his country really well, and then he's got a plum job being paid an absolute fortune by taxpayers to comment on it. And that's not good enough. Yet he's silent, fingers on lips, not a sound out of him when the pensioners got stiffed for the TV licence. And now you've got to be <laughs> over 75 and on pension credits to oh, get indeed. it. No, oh, I did. He's not coming... That. For his precious BBC, who pay him a million pounds a year to read an auto cue June and pay for him to stay in very posh hotels in Qatar for a month. The thing that I find most infuriating about this, though, is that when the new BBC Director General started in his job, he said it didn't matter how famous the BBC personality was, didn't matter how much they were paid, didn't matter how popular they were on Twitter, he was going to crack down on BBC presenters paid for by us expressing their woke, liberal, metropolitan bias. And Gary Lineker refuses to listen to that. He does it all the time. He spouts off complete nonsense that doesn't even make any sense, June. And Tim Davey has done nothing about it. And the thing is, for a long time, June, Lineker always used to say, oh, well, this doesn't matter because it's just sport. I'm just a sport presenter. I'm not in news. I'm not in politics. But now he's actually turned himself into a political commentator on the BBC. Well, the problem is there's a lot of outspoken... I'm outspoken, but I'm just a mush. I'm just one of the people who's managed to get an, a slot on GB News, which I'm eternally grateful for. But the problem with people like Lineker... Let's just let's just nail him here. 
What have you got to offer, Gary? What what have you what are you offering the nation? You're rich. You made your money from your sport and you're making your money off the back of the taxpayer who pays the licence fee to listen to you talk about the sport that you love. The rest is your doing. We're not really interested. You've only got a load of crazies turning up saying, oh, St. Gary of Lineker, you're marvellous. You're saying all the right things. You, you're so left-wing, you'll fall off the face of the earth if it was flat. Um, but normal people don't want to listen to this. They want to listen to Gary's expertise on sport, yeah. not his opinions exactly. On- and the problem is, Politics. when you take the BBC coin, when you take the licence fee payer money, the deal that you do is you keep your opinions to yourself. If you want to go and spout off about politics all the time, Gary Lineker, go and join Emily Maitlis at the Labour Broadcasting Company, otherwise known as LBC. Uh, but look, thank you so much to our social media sensation, self-confessed Chief Gammon June Slater. Coming up, will Brexit the movie be coming soon to a cinema near you? Top Tory Spartan Marc Francois reveals more on that at 10.20. But first, as Meghan claims the royal family launched a media war against her, why isn't she coughing up the evidence? My superstar panel returned for that, and the first front pages are going to drop in the media buzz straight after the break. We're back in just two minutes' time. I'm Mark Dolan. Join me at 11 on GB News for Headliners, in which I'll be joined by two of the UK's top comedians discussing tomorrow's papers. If it's an important story, we'll cover it, but we'll have some fun along the way. Headliners, the late night paper review that won't send you to sleep like the others will. Seven nights a week at 11pm on GB News. Hello, I'm Michelle Jubery, and you can join me every weekday, 6 till 7 on Jubes and Kerr. Me and my panel will get stuck right into the day's events. And I can tell you, in fact, I can warn you, expect some robust debates and strong opinions and perspectives from both sides of the fence. It's about you at home as well. I love to read out all of your comments, or at least as many as I can. So join me, Michelle Jubery, Monday to Friday, 6 till 7 on Jubes and Kerr. I'm Mark White. As GB News Home and Security Editor, I cover those key issues that are so important to you. Our authorities, our communities doing all they can to combat violent crime. With the public services under unbearable strain, why are we still failing to control our borders? Defence, the first priority of any government, has been continually hollowed out. Can we trust our politicians to protect the armed forces? Join me, Mark White, on GB News. We are GB News, the people's channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. It's 10 p.m. I'm Dan Wooten. Tonight, as the country braces itself for a day without the care of nursing staff, putting our lives at risk, and brand new polling shows public support for the unions has plummeted, should nurses be calling off their historic strike action tomorrow? And should they legally be stopped from ever walking out on patients again? I say yes, but I'm going to debate it with my superstar panel. Tonight, I'm joined by Dawn Neeson, Adam Brooks, and Ashley James. And in our other big story, on the eve of Harry and Meghan Volume 2, Netflix have released their most disgraceful propaganda yet. It was a real kind of war against Meghan. And I've certainly seen evidence that there was negative briefing from the palace. So after dropping such an explosive grenade on the royal family, should the Sussexes be asked to put up or shut up by providing the evidence for those incendiary claims? That's coming up next. 
Plus, as the Britain-hating Duke and Duchess try to rip apart our national identity and deceitfully claim that we're all intolerant races, should we put it to the people to decide if Harry and Meghan keep their titles or Nana Queer is ready to propose a Megxit referendum? She joins me live for Uncancelled later in the show. Meanwhile, is Brexit about to go big at the box office? Spartan Tory Brexiteer Marc Francois has written a book about the fight for Brexit soul and he is going to join me and you'll also get a first look at tomorrow's newspaper front pages as they drop and a brand new Greatest Britain and Union Jackass will be named too. But first, the news with Polly Middlehurst. Dan, thank you. The top story tonight on GB News. The six-year-old boy who was hospitalised after falling into an icy lake in Solihull on Sunday has died, meaning four children in total lost their lives in the tragic accident. The little boy had been in a critical condition since being rescued from the icy waters of Babs Mill Lake in Kingshurst. West Midlands police said they couldn't comprehend the enormity of the pain the families must be feeling but added that further searches of the lake have now been called off. A prolific offender who murdered a law graduate in East London in June has been sentenced to life in prison and ordered to serve a minimum of 38 years behind bars. Jordan McSweeney, who'd only been released from prison nine days before he killed Zara Elena, pleaded guilty to her murder. He refused, though, to leave his cell and attend court for sentencing, saying he didn't want to watch video evidence of his actions. McSweeney was caught on CCTV following other women before attacking the 35-year-old as she walked home from a night out in Ilford. After sentencing, Miss Alina's aunt said the family live with a profound loss. Sorrow was the light, the warmth, the bird song, the laughter in our family. We live with a profound loss each day, and each day we are destroyed a little more. A search operation in the English Channel is expected to be called off about now after a small boat capsized earlier today, resulting in the deaths of at least four migrants. 43 others were rescued and GB News was told others may still be missing, having fallen overboard. In a joint statement, the Home Office and France's Interior Ministry say they worked side by side in a coordinated response. Around half of Britain's railways were closed today as the RMT staged their second day of strikes across the country. Thousands of workers at Network Rail and 14 other train companies walked out, leaving some parts of the UK with no train services at all. It's all part of a long-running dispute over pay, jobs and conditions. And after the RMT rejected an offer of 5% this year and another 4% pay rise next year. Football and in Qatar, France, have won their semi-final match against Morocco. Theo Hernandez's volley gave France the lead after five minutes. Mbappe's second half shot deflected into the path of Randall Colomwani for a tap-in to book their place into the final. Defending champions will take on Argentina on Sunday. That's it. You're up to date on TV, online and DAB Plus Radio. You're with GB News. Dan Wooden tonight is now. Tomorrow's news tonight now in our media buzz. Let's get off with the very first look at the front pages hot off the press and the Metro reports on the murder of law graduate Zara Alina being jailed for life with a minimum of 38 years. John McSweeney, a known sexual predator, attacked the law graduate in East London in June. The Eye leads with a desperate plea for help from the migrants trapped on board a sinking boat in the channel. A man believed to be caught in the tragedy left an anguished 2am voicemail with a charity. Four died after the boat capsized in freezing water with more than 40 rescued. Tough luck, kid. Your presents have been eaten by foxes. The headline in the Daily Star, as vermin reportedly feast on undelivered Christmas gifts piling up at depots as the bloody posties go on strike. 
The Guardian leads on a damning independent examination into how police forces tackle rape, finding evidence of a failure to track repeat suspects, botched investigations, and explicit victim blaming. An arresting front page from the Mirror, who are very much on the side of the nurses ahead of their historic strike tomorrow. The lefty publication declares you cared for us when we needed it most. Now the decent people of Britain say to our nurses, we are with you. Uh, I mean, I really <coughs> struggle with that because I do wonder how Daily Mirror readers will feel if their mother, grandmother, father, husband, wife, child die over the next 24 hours as a result of this nurse's strike. Because believe me, there will be deaths, whether they come immediately or whether they come because of delayed cancer treatments, there will be death as a result of this strike. And remember, the, the nurses want a 19% pay increase. We're going to be talking about it later in the show. Uh, but back with me now on the Superstar panel, former editor and current columnist of the Daily Star, Dawn Neeson, the businessman and activist Adam Brooks and the broadcaster, Ashley James. Now, as Meghan and Harry release yet another desperate trailer for their Netflix atrocity, it's become clear that this isn't just a deranged attack on their enemies. They're launching one of the biggest disinformation campaigns of the decade. It was a real kind of war against Meghan. And I've certainly seen evidence that there was negative briefing from the palace against Harry and Meghan to suit other people's agendas. Meg became this scapegoat for the palace, and so they would feed stories on her, whether they were true or not, to avoid other less favorable stories being printed. You would just see it play out. It's like a story about someone in the family would pop up for a minute, and they go, we gotta make that go away. Where are the receipts, Megan? I mean, I was personally involved in the biggest story of the Sussexes' time in the royal family, from Tiara Gate to Megson, and I can be clear that it's nonsense to suggest the royal family communication staff were planting negative stories against the Sussexes. In fact, for many months, they did their utmost to keep a host of negative but true stories out of the newspapers, usually at the behest of Harry and Meghan, and they largely succeeded. It was only when Meghan's behaviour, including bullying, became so bad and widespread <coughs> that reporters like me found out about it and did our job to get these stories into the paper. So, Dorton Neeson, <laughs> Megan claims that there was a war, a war against her, surely, with this sort of rhetoric being up to... I mean, by the way, I think that word in itself is so inappropriate to use, given her privilege and given what being at war really means. You'd think her husband would have told her what being at war really means. Uh, but given she has now made this claim, surely tomorrow... What we have to see is actual evidence. We need to see names, we need to see times, we need to see emails, we need to see call logs, because otherwise, Dawn, I don't believe it. I don't, I don't believe it either. I don't know where this is coming from. I mean, this orchestrated war by the media, it just didn't happen. I mean, we both worked on newspapers at the time, Dan. I never dealt direct... As an editor, I never dealt directly. I didn't have a hotline to the <laughs> Her Majesty or Charles going, oh, God, you'd never guess what they've done now. It just didn't happen, as you say, that the palace always went out of their way to shut stories down. Indeed, and Dawn, I think it's really important, actually, that we talk about this, because usually this is the sort of inside baseball stuff that doesn't really interest people, how the sausage is made. But it is not planting or leaking stories no. for a communications secretary to speak to a journalist like me who might have a story and try to guide that journalist, that's very different to, as you say, actually calling someone up and saying, Megan's done something terrible. You'll never terrible. guess what she's done now. I mean, it just doesn't happen. Most of the time you would phone them up and they would most of the time say no comment. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was what they did. Yeah. You know, or... or it was the tyranny it, of the no comment. Absolutely. And then you'd have to work really hard to well, stand me, the story out. I, I can tell you, Dawn, there were legal threats. Uh, oh, there were absolutely. threats to use the regulatory body, Ipso, to try and silence me. And the thing is, I just knew this story was important and I was the first person to publish it and look at what it's become. And I think it's really wrong, actually, to suggest that journalists uh, should find out information about what's going on behind the scenes in the royal family and not report it, which is what Harry and Meghan seem to want us to but do. But this is the thing. But on the other hand, the hypocrisy here is Harry and Meghan are quite happy to work with their little pet journalists. Oh, yeah. Like their little weird bloke. Yeah, Omen he's Scobie. a bit strange. But also the American publications oh, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was in Touch magazine, I think, back in 2019, that first started the whole William story and the rumours and the allegations about William. 
And that was supposedly coming from Harry and Meghan's camp. So there's also hypocrisy involved in this as well about who's briefing whom. I mean, I... I just... Well, they were certainly briefing. I, I've actually said today, earlier today, that Harry and Meghan's own communications secretary briefed me when I had stories. <laughs> yes. Because that's them doing their job. It doesn't mean they were planting stories. I mean, Ashley James, I know you've been a big supporter of Harry and Meghan, and you've been very vocal against the British media over the past week. So what evidence do you have that the British media was conducting a war against Meghan and Harry, as they claim? I don't have evidence, but also I'm not, like, pro Meghan and Harry and everything they do, but there is Sounds lots it. of evidence to show that the way Meghan was treated versus the way Kate was treated for doing the same things are very, very different. And also, it's not unusual... Kate was called Weighty Katie for about two years. Yeah, she was, which... What which, about Workshire William awful, as well? Which is also awful, but there's also lots of evidence, like... Um, Kate being praised for her wedding flowers being lilies, oh, Megan's saying that you it's always come back. Because Actually, do you know what's so frustrating? So many, do you know what's so frustrating? There are Meghan so many examples. Megan wants to examples. bring down the royal family, and you come down, you come down desperately she, to these I handful watched... of about five examples. I know what you're going to say: straight out of Compton, avocados. I mean, Megan criticised for holding is her racist, bump. Loads of things are written Compton. online. Actually, the British press celebrated Meghan until, until she we stepped found out, out of line and didn't stand in line like a good girl should. There well, is or bullied staff, it depends and how also, you look at her Or bullied staff, it depends yeah, how you look I'm, at I'm not going to defend Meghan and Harry, but I just don't like seeing bullying. And also, we know that the royal family... If you don't like seeing bullying, adjusted... why shouldn't you be more concerned about her behaviour? Because she's the one who has multiple bullying claims against her. She's the one that has an internal investigation by Buckingham Palace into her bullying, which has been Other covered members up. Of the royal family also have injunctions out against um, household staff to not talk to certain press about personal... That's well, not true. Ongoing. That's not true. Yes, there it is. is. There isn't. Well, they all Prince, assign... Prince Charles won injunctions against household staff. He also sued when? the when? Mail on Sunday, back when? in the day. Well, they and he yeah, is also... Who said also... that? A Guardian? They all no. sign... They all sign... If you go and work for the royal family, right, you have to sign, effectively, the Official Secrets Act, Adam. You are gagged. Mm. And I think there's an argument now that actually the Sussex Survivors Club, as mm. they have branded themselves, these are the staff members who had to go through yeah. that terrible bullying from Harry and Meghan, uh, I feel they should be allowed to speak I said it last week. Of oh. course, if they're allowed to speak out, we get a big picture. We yeah. can make our own mind yeah. up whether or not the four or five staff are telling the truth or Meghan is. Look, at the end of the day, Meghan doesn't need to do anything. She can keep putting these claims and allegations out because she knows that the palace is not going to hit back. The thing is, I just want specifics. I, I, I really feel she says the stakes are so yes, high. Yeah, this is a You know, thing. Dawn, the stakes are so high that this could actually bring down the monarchy. We know the undertone of what she's saying. So it's not good enough for her to send out her lawyer and her best mate to parrot her talking points. Let's see the evidence. We... Put up or shut up, OK, Megan? I... I... The lawyer is saying we have proof. I mean, if Let's that is it. the case, we need to see the proof. The only reason they're saying this, Dan, is because they know the royal family will not mm. answer Exactly. Back. She's they got free reign so... to say but what look, she wants. But, but there's been lots of accusations against me, for example, and I am prepared to be very clear and very transparent about who I spoke to, where my stories came from, obviously without revealing any confidential sources, but certainly in terms of the conversations mm. that I was having with royal officials, because I feel now, actually, she is conducting a misinformation campaign. And so it is going to be on people like me who are allowed to speak out to do so. But in saying that, I am going to wait to judge. We've got three hours of volume two tomorrow. Oh, don't worry, God. I'm going to watch it first thing. So tomorrow. I don't have, have to, to. Thank yeah. God. But, but also, tomorrow it'll be night... completely twisted like the last part was, but it's a, a docuseries which is six hours. Oh, no, no, I'm going to watch it all, Ashley. I'm going to watch it all. And tomorrow night, uh, we are going to have all the analysis that you need. We will have the facts. We'll hear from the Markles. We'll hear from Lady Colin Campbell. We're going to have Tom Bauer here. <laughs> so we're going to be doing the full analysis of what's really going on, plus allies of Meghan and Harry too. Uh, now, look, we're used to Labour being all talk and no trousers when it comes to handling the migrant crisis, but this bizarre and, quite frankly, appalling rant from the Corbynite MP Clive Lewis epitomises just how out of touch Labour is with the rest of the public. So here's the Norwich South MP. 
I can't even believe Looking I'm... at that headline, <clears throat> Pontins Revolt, Tory backlash at plan to house migrants in holiday camps. Um, let's be really clear here. My understanding is if you put a group of people concentrated into a camp, as you did in South Africa in the Boer War, that's what you call a concentration camp. Now, I'm not making any... Uh, I'm making it... No, it is. It's a, concentra it's, a concentration, it's a concentration Clive, of people... A, a... So he was actually comparing placement of illegal channel migrants in Pontins holiday parks to sending them to concentration camps. I mean, I don't know about you, uh, but for people allegedly fleeing war and persecution and hellhole countries, I reckon the great British holiday park probably isn't a bad place to end up. But what despicable language. Ashley James, Adam Brooks, Storm Neeson, do stand by because coming up, as I mentioned, should nurses call off their historic strike in mere hours? And should they be banned from ever striking again, as Jeremy Hunt appeared to suggest? My superstar panel will return to debate that in part two of the Media Buzz. But next, is Brexit the movie about to come to a cinema near you? Spartan Tory MP Mark Francois, who wrote an insider's book about the fallout from the referendum, reveals all. He's live in the studio next. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deems & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Mark Stein. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. Here on GB News Live, we'll be keeping you in the picture, finding out what's happening across the country and finding out why it matters to you. We'll have the facts fast with our team of reporters and specialist correspondents. Wherever it's happening, we'll be there from 12 noon on TV, radio and online. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. We are GB News, the people's channel. Why not take us home with you by visiting the GB News shop at gbnews.store. You'll find all the official merchandise, a really good present actually for yourself, your friends or your family. We ship across the UK mainland at no extra cost. GB News, the people's channel. Join my show, Farage, 7pm till 8pm, Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate, and I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. You've been cancelled. Join the club. Oh, my goodness me. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints. We're over a drink. We have a civilised conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. Monday to Thursday on GB News, it's Bev Turner today from 10 a.m. We're going to be here for you, our GB News family, to keep you up to date, but also make you smile. The guy went from puberty to adultery. <laughs> and I can't wait to bring a few of my own opinions. I have no time for cultural totalitarianism. <laughs> we'll engage in passionate but always polite debate with your thoughts and opinions at the centre of it all. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Hi there, it's Stephen and Anne. At breakfast from 6am, you'll always be caught up with everything you need to know. The latest headlines, opinions and debates. We'll bring you the good news and the bad, but most of all, we're here for you. Remember, send in your views and let us know what you would like us to talk about. That's because we're your news channel. And every morning at 6am, it's breakfast on GB News. Join me every Sunday at 6 p.m. for Gloria Meets. In exclusive interviews, I'll be finding out who our politicians really are and what they really think. It's something that you would never want anyone to suffer. I didn't know what channels there were. B, I didn't think I'd be believed. I must have weighed about seven stone and I'm five foot eight. My instincts was to sort of cover this up. I mean, clearly that was a mistake. Join me every Sunday at 6 p.m. on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Hello, I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11pm, where I'll be joined by two of the country's top comedians as we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it, I guarantee, but we'll also have some fun along the way. That's GB News Headliners at 11pm. We won't put you to sleep, unlike some of the other paper review shows out there. So join us, 11pm, seven nights a week.
My next guest is a heavy-hitting bastion of Brexit who's spent years fighting for Britain's freedom from the EU. And despite all of his successes, Tory MP Mark Francois is still battling to guarantee Brexit survival from Ramona's in government, such as the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt. And as the EU suffered yet another corruption scandal this week with raids on politicians' homes, finding millions in dirty cash from Qatar, our decision to leave the continental gravy train has never looked better, in my opinion. As a key member of the European Research Group of Eurosceptic Euro Conservatives, Mark penned a book on his so-called ban of Spartan MPs who helped deliver democracy in the face of unprecedented Ramona obstruction. Now he's in talks for a bombshell movie that would dramatise how the Tory Spartans assured a full-throttled Brexit would be delivered. Now, I love this idea of Brexit, the movie, so we mulled it over and thought about which actors could play all the famous protagonists. So of course, you'd have to have Dominic Cummings again with Benedict Cumberbatch. But how about Sir Bill Cash, played by Charles Dance, or Theresa the Appeaser May, portrayed by Tilda Swinton, the EU menace, Jean-Claude Juncker. Hmm, how about Ralph Fiennes for him? And Jacob Rees-Mogg, well, we thought David Tennant. Maybe a little flattering, but, you know... Uh, I think it works. Mark Francois, great to see you. I mean, look, it would be such a great movie, wouldn't it? Surely the producers are knocking down your door. Well, I've been in talks with a, with, with a few TV producers um, and there has been some interest, I'm pleased to say. Um, look, Brexit, whatever view you took, was arguably the biggest event in British politics mm. since the Second World War. And what the book does and it's dedicated, by the way, to my great friend, Sir David Amos. Oh. And what the book does is, as it says on the tin, it's the inside story of the battle for Brexit. And it explains in layman's English the three-year battle we had in Parliament and in the media to get delivered the decision, the democratically arrived at decision of the British people. And there was immense resistance from the Ramona element and it basically tells the story of how, in the end, 28 Tory MPs won through mm. and helped delivered what the people had voted for. Yeah, because you, you, you behind the scenes, there, it was fascinating, wasn't it, what was going on? Because there were clashes at times uh, between folk like you and Jacob Rees-Mogg, which were actually really emotional, right? Yeah. Yes. I, I, I mean, when the, you know, when the public were looking in and they were seeing arguments about the, the Malthouse Compromise and the Brady Amendment and the Cooper Bowles Letwin Bill and what was all this parliamentary gobbledygook about, and what the book does is it basically explains all of that in layman's English. But I do think this was such an important event in British history, someone should make a movie about it. Now, I mean, I would love the full, you know, Hollywood biopic. And by the way, we thought that Bill Nye would be a very good person to play Bill Cash. Oh, yes, if, that if, would if, work if, too. Yeah, that would work, wouldn't it? But, that you know, would work too. But even if we couldn't have the full Hollywood treatment, then, you know, if you think of that 90-minute drama documentary that you referred to, mm. Uncivil War, where Cumberbatch famously played mm. Cummings and kind of got him to a T, something like that that showed the public what was really going on in Parliament I think would actually yeah. be worthwhile producing. Well, indeed. And look, for a while, uh, it looked like you guys had won. You know, the ERG was all of a sudden the mainstream of the Conservative Party. But Marc Francois, you know, Brexiteers like me outside of the party are now increasingly concerned with what we feel was an anti-democratic, globalist Ramona coup to install Jeremy Hunt as Chancellor. He seems to be pulling a lot of the strings. The issue that I have with Hunt is that we know he wanted a second referendum. Uh, he wrote it. We know he wanted to tie us to a Norway-style deal in perpetuity. So how are you feeling about uh, your leadership at the moment? And can we really trust them on Brexit? Well, look, in the end, after this battle, and if you'll forgive me for saying so, the, the book's still available on Amazon, yes. the softback. Yes, Thir it is. £13, pounds, still arrives for Christmas. Thank you very much. <laughs> very, I like very it. Good. If you've got a friend who's a Remainer and you want to wind them up, send them that <laughs> as a Christmas present. But, but um, I mean, no, we did succeed. We left the yeah. European Union. Yes. Yeah, we legally yeah. were out but we're still arguing about things like the Northern Ireland Protocol. Yeah, because so Brexit was always going to be a long-term project, right? Yes, it was never going to be ju just, just a one, no. an overnight no. occurrence. So, Hunt, Hunt, I mean, can the ERG trust this guy? 
I think we need to get a proper deal on the Northern Ireland Protocol. Mm. Now, he's not in the lead on that. It's James Cleverly, the Foreign Secretary, who is a Eurosceptic by mm. background. I think, providing we continue with the Protocol Bill, and the fact that the EU so hates it tells you mm. how valuable it is uh, as a negotiating lever. If we stick to our guns, I think it is possible to negotiate a reasonable deal. But if the EU are intransigent, we should push ahead with the bill. Is it fair to say that Suala Braverman is the only one of proper ERG stock now in the cabinet? No, I'm not sure that's absolutely right. But nevertheless, but, but, well, well, Suella has always been, you know, very robust on the European issue. And obviously there's been much debate, including in Parliament today, about the boats mm -hmm. in, the, in the Channel yeah. issue. I think you're going to see a great debate about that in the new year. Leaving the UCHR. Well, when the Prime Minister brings forward the bill that he's now promised the Commons, which is meant to address this directly, I think the nub of the issue will be a so-called notwithstanding clause, which basically means that in this particular scenario, the boats in the channel, the ECHR will not apply. And I can see there being a great deal of debate in Parliament about that, but that's what you're going to need if the legislation is going to work. Mm, indeed. Uh, but I come back to my point that there are not many of your stock anymore in positions of power. Well, there weren't many of our stock in positions of power when uh, we were dis debating the withdrawal agreement, but we still won in the end. And I think we won because of the quality of the argument and because we were... But the ERG is not going anywhere, then. Well, we have been absolutely consistent on the Northern Ireland Protocol, mm. and that is anything, any deal that ends up with the European Court of Justice still having authority in Northern Ireland mm. to overrule UK law is completely unacceptable. And I think, you know, even if it were acceptable to us to have that, then it wouldn't be to the DUP. And frankly, unless the DUP agree, nothing will work. And why do you need to solve the problem of the protocol? Because otherwise, ultimately, the Good Friday Agreement would collapse. And no one of any political no, colour wants to see that. The stakes are incredibly high. Look, final question. Uh, Rishi Sunak voted for Brexit. Yeah. But is he a Brexiteer? By definition, he voted for Brexit. The most important thing, and, and the book really brings this point out, because in the end we thought we were actually... It was, became a struggle for democracy. It was a struggle to uphold the right of the British people to decide their own destiny. So whether Rishi Sunak voted for Brexit or whether you voted for Brexit or I voted for Brexit, the most fundamentally important bit, and this is the principle that we were fighting for all along, is that 17.4 million British people voted for Brexit. And that book is about how it was actually delivered. Indeed. Well, look, there it is. Spartan victory, the inside story of the battle for Brexit by Mark Francois, hopefully coming to the silver screen. Well, soon. that one's for you, and I've got inside it. Good, I've got some Christmas reading coming up. That's brilliant. Thank, thank you, you very so much, much indeed. Mark. Great to Not see at all. you. Cheers, thank you. But coming up, should there be a referendum, speaking of referendums, <laughs> to decide whether Harry and Meghan keep their royal titles? Nana Require thinks so. Uh, I guess we could call it, following the Brexit referendum, the Megxit referendum. She's going to put her case in uncancelled at 10.45. But first, should nurses call off their historic strike tomorrow? And with lives in the balance, should they be banned from walking out again? My Superstar panel returns to debate that. We're going to have more of tomorrow's newspaper front pages too, so don't go anywhere. Back after the break. We are GB News, and we'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you for bringing us your conversations, for helping our great nation find its voice. We are here for you on radio, television, and online, across England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. It's not the BBC, you know, you actually get your facts right. We are proud to be GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Hi there, it's Stephen and Anne. At breakfast from 6am, you'll always be caught up with everything you need to know. The latest headlines, opinions and debates. We'll bring you the good news and the bad, but most of all, we're here for you. Remember, send in your views and let us know what you would like us to talk about. 
That's because we're your news channel. And every morning at 6am, it's breakfast on GB News. Monday to Thursday on GB News, it's Bev Turner today from 10am. We're going to be here for you, our GB News family, to keep you up to date, but also make you smile. The guy went from puberty to adultery. <laughs> and I can't wait to bring a few of my own opinions. I have no time for cultural totalitarianism. <laughs> we'll engage in passionate, but always polite debate with your thoughts and opinions at the centre of it all. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Nana Akue, Saturday and Sunday afternoons on GB News. Expect fungary debate and passionate discussion as me and my panel tackle some of the biggest topics hitting the headlines. It's a place for everyone's opinion. No one gets cancelled, but no one gets an easy ride. <laughs> oh, she's <laughs> on it today! I, 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 Be ready for conversations that are fierce, frank and, of course, fun every Saturday and Sunday afternoon from 4pm on GB News, the People's Channel. Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate, and I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. You've been cancelled. Join the club. Oh, my goodness, me. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints. We're over a drink. We have a civilised conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. We are GB News, the people's channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Let's return to tomorrow's news site now in our media buzz. Lots more front pages are in. The Sun leads with the stark headline, £5,000 ticket to death, highlighting the evil of channel people traffickers after four migrants die in the freezing waters. The Times also reports on the migrant dinghy deaths as fears remain for others lost at sea. The paper reports say fishermen heard horrifying screams as he came to the rescue. The Independent also leads with the ongoing migrant crisis, reporting that Home Secretary Suala Braverman will block new routes to the UK for refugees. Give nurses a deal and stop this madness, please, the Daily Express, as some Tories call on the government for action. Polling suggests 52% strongly support health workers' demands. As I say, don't think they'll keep supporting them when one of their relatives or close friends dies as a result of this strike action. The Daily Telegraph also leads on the nurses' strike as hospital chiefs warn that the damage of union action will get worse as longer walkouts affecting end-of-life care are likely in January. My superstar panel back with me now, former editor, current columnist at The Daily Star, Dawn Neeson, the businessman and activist Adam Brooks and the broadcaster Ashley James. Now, breaking tonight, nurses in England, Wales and Northern Ireland will walk off the job and abandon their, pa their patients for the first time in history from 8am tomorrow after last-ditch attempts to avoid the life-threatening strike failed. The UK's four chief nursing officers yesterday wrote to the Royal College of Nursing warning that the walkout would put patients at risk. England's representative, Dame Ruth May, told the RCN's militant chief executive, Pat Cullen, that lives were at risk, adding many chief nurses and directors of nursing are, of course, RCN members themselves, and some have expressed feelings of having been let down by the RCN. NHS England's National Cancer Director, Dame Kelly Palmer, also pleaded with the union to take a compassionate approach for patients. She wrote, Our common aim is to ensure we do not cause harm to people undergoing vital cancer treatment to achieve cure or extension of life. Up to 100,000 health workers are expected to join the strike over unmet demands for an astronomical 19% pay rise and 15 thousand operations could be cancelled as a result. Now, Chancellor Jeremy Hunt was asked yesterday if the government would ever consider a ban on future strikes. Uh, he's reluctant to rule it out for good reason. Watch. I'm sorry, minimum service levels, you know, is going to a certain degree, but I'm talking about a complete ban on striking and asking directly, do you think nurses should be banned from striking? Well, the government will publish in due course 
what its plans are. Uh, I think at the moment, what we would like to do is to find a way not to have these strikes. Adam Brooks, I, look, I'm so angry about this because we can't afford as a country at the moment the health system no. to go into further backlog. And of course people have sympathy for nurses, but when you actually think about what they're asking for, a 19% raise, when they were the only group of public sector workers that still did receive a pay rise during the pay freeze, yeah. it's just so unreasonable. And I put it to you that folk might feel sympathetic until one of their relatives, one of their friends, yeah. one of their family members lose their life, have their cancer Someone operation will die delayed. Then. Someone or, you know, maybe many people will die from this action. And for that reason, I cannot support this at all. I think it's a disgrace. Now, I'm someone that thinks our frontline nurses should be paid more. But 19 mm percent. -hmm. They had 4 percent this year, 3 percent last year, I believe. Yeah, when there now, was the pay freeze. Now, where has this 19 percent come from? Even Keir Starmer and Labour are not backing no. this. They're, you know, they're, they're stepping back. Mm. It's so unreasonable. And people saying, why, why are the government, you know, not stepping in and, and negotiating? If if someone comes in a negotiation and takes the absolute mickey, which I think 19% is right now, then why would I want to talk to them and negotiate? If they'd come in 7, 8, 9%, my whole tone here would be completely of different. Of course, Look, it's completely they deserve un unrealistic. Money. And also it would lead to an inflation death spiral. Yeah. Now, Dawn, I know you very much do believe in the right to strike. You've spoken about it a lot yeah, before. Yeah, of course I do. And, and you know, your, your father was big in the union movement. But I'm sorry, Dawn, police officers can't strike. Are nurses not absolutely essential to the running of our country? I, why should they not be banned from strike? Well, you're talking to someone who, as you know, a loved one is going through cancer treatment at the moment. Yeah. They've had a, blood, a very important blood test cancelled tomorrow you're because of the strike. Me. So, so yeah. I, so I, this um, has personally impacted you? Yeah, no, absolutely it has, as, as lots of people watching will be feeling the same. Um, look, I, I disagree with Adam on this one because it's like... It's not like they want 19%. They don't expect to get 19%. But when you are negotiating, and I've run business as well, when you are negotiating, you start off with a ridiculous figure. The other side not that comes... ridiculous. In... Yes, you do, Adam. You know you do. You come in with the lower side and you meet with in the lives. middle. You've me... Sorry? People are already dying. That is the point. That, that's, that's not an argument at all. That's part of the reason. Yes, it is. No, it's not. This action will directly cost lives. It's different. Look, we, we can all attack the NHS hierarchy and yeah. the government for lack of, of course, you know... And we know we can, why we we're here. Do that. We know why but we're here, because the National Health Service became the National this decision COVID to strike, Service. Yes, and, exactly. and, 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 and so absolutely people are dying, Ashley. But the fact is, these are people who we need to rely on. They've got to be there for you. How would you feel yeah, so if imagine... one of your relatives lose their life because of this action? The issue is... People are already losing their lives. Nurses and other NHS staff are not able to provide the duty of care. Lots of senior level staff are leaving because they cannot handle the burnout anymore. Therefore, junior staff well, they've had 30 being left more funding. Junior staff, yeah, which is going to agencies because currently there are over 1.5 million job vacancies. By the way, agencies owned by lots of Tory donors, including Lord Ashcroft. So what's happening is they're coming in with agency staff and they're taking out profit. These private companies, whether it's cleaning, catering, um, agency staff, they are taking out profit. So your solution is donors. to take all private companies no, out but of this the is, NHS? No, this is desperation. And by the way, Nicholas Sturgeon met with the unions and the strike is called off For in now. Scotland. Or now. Yeah, but they or met now. with them. So why have the Nicholas UK Nicholas Sturgeon ain't offering a 19% pay rise. Why have the UK government not met with people? Nurses do not want well, to no, no, strike. They, did they are desperate. No, 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 they, they did meet. Steve Barclay did meet with the head of the RCN. But the point is he wasn't prepared to have conversations about money. Because that and is done by an independent body so that things stay fair. Now, Ashley, I put this to you. I ask you this very simple question. In this current economic climate, given that nurses have had pay rises the past two years, do you believe that the nurses 
should receive a 19% pay increase this year. Well, the point is, it's a yes it or no question. It should be negotiated. But yes, I believe that people who okay. save lives Where deserve does that money a pay come rise. From? Well, maybe if we look at what's been written off in the last three months, four billion pounds of fraud. Yeah, but we're not getting yeah, that back. We're not getting that back. Where are we getting that back? Give away to banks. There is, all, there is always money, and when you say and this there's is no money every tree, year we've got there is no this. nurse tree. There's no paramedic tree. There's no doctor tree. We yeah, need, but there, there is a, a middle manager to, tree. There is a diversity officer tree. We need to retain There is an art officer tree. We need to retain staff, and we need to attract. No, no. Well, I appreciate your. Honesty. I, I appreciate your honesty because even Benjamin Butterworth earlier in the week uh, was not prepared to say that he would give nurses a 19% pay increase because most folk on the left acknowledge that 19% will lead to an inflation death spiral for the economy. But for me, I just feel this is so unreasonable. I'm so scared, actually, about what's going to happen if over the next 24 happens, hours. If nothing happens, people will continue to leave the NHS. 34,000 nurses have left the NHS this year. The nurses that are remaining are striking in desperation because they cannot yep. retain but, staff, but, but you know what? staff, or provide staff. There are certain care. jobs where I believe striking is deeply well, responsible. Well, well, then we won't have Dan, any of these the viewers. Let's remind the viewers. Let's remind the viewers why police cannot strike. Yeah. Of course. Because there would be anarchy, there would of be course. deaths, there would be... Of course. You know, it, and what we're talking carnage. about is anarchy in our health service over yeah. the next 24 hours. Now, uh, on a lighter note, despite spending 13 years making a three-hour movie about conserving nature and the wonderful creatures in it, Avatar The Way of Water director James Cameron has gotten it in the bottleneck from flipping mad environmentalists after using dolphins to sell his wares. So joined by stars including Sigourney Weaver and Zoe Saldana, Cameron launched the upcoming blockbuster which explores the oceans of the alien world of Pandora from the 2009 original in Japan with suitably splashy, uh, well, a suitably splashy show actually at a Tokyo marine park. I mean, it looks great to me. Have a look at this. Welcome to Pandora. Hey. Please put your hands together for the dolphins and guests, welcome to Japan. Oh, aren't they amazing? I mean, Cameron is hardly alone in having visited one of those sorts of attractions. They do great conservation work. Uh, I've been to those sorts of dolphin parks and it's fascinating to get up close and personal with them. Uh, I wouldn't exactly call this a Titanic era. Nonetheless, those extremists at Peter accused the filmmaker of, quote, endorsing the cruelty of marine parks and animal misery, adding that putting sea creatures in tanks is something the villains of Avatar would do. Interesting uh, that not even Cameron's decade of veganism exempts him from being labelled an enemy of animals by Peter. Uh, Dawn Neeson, Adam Brooks, Ashley James, do stand by because coming up, which music icon has sparked outrage by saying there was too much fuss around the Queen's funeral? It will all be revealed as I crown today's greatest Britain in Union Jackass at 10.50. But first, as the royal family braces itself for more Sussex bombshells, should there be a Megxit referendum to decide if Meghan and Harry keep their titles? Our very own Nana Raquire gives her big pitch next in Uncancelled. Every morning from six o'clock, we'll wake you up with GB News Breakfast with all the stories you didn't know from the night before. So whether it's serious news, entertainment, or your own views from all over our great nation, we're here to kick off your day with a smile. And the national media should be reflecting and reporting what's happening here. You will notice the Northwestern accents. <laughs> whether you're with us on TV, radio, or online, every morning, it's breakfast from 6 a.m. Hope you can join us. We are GB News, right across the nation. You can get us on television, on radio, on digital. We're absolutely everywhere. Amazing! You see, amazing! You remind me of me and the European Parliament. <laughs> but here's the most important bit. We are not part of the mainstream establishment. We think and speak just like you do. We are the People's Channel. Magnificent. That's really, really thoughtful. Come and join us on GB News, the People's News Channel. 
My name's Tom Harwood and join me 9.30am every weekday for The Briefing, your one-stop shop for everything you need to know about what's going on in politics today. I wonder if this is a deal that might need to be like the biscuits in this factory, twice baked. Is there not an opportunity here to win out against the extremes? Tom Harwood, GB News. What are you going to do about it? Things should have been done differently and they, and they certainly are being done differently. Don't miss it. The Briefing with me, Tom Harwood, 9.30, Monday to Friday on GB News. Join me, Nana Akwe, Saturday and Sunday afternoons on GB News. Expect fiery debate and passionate discussion as me and my panel tackle some of the biggest topics hitting the headlines. It's a place for everyone's opinion. No one gets cancelled, but no one gets an easy ride. <laughs> oh, she's on it, she's on it. Be ready for conversations that are fierce, frank, and of course, fun every Saturday and Sunday afternoon from 4 pm on GB News, the People's Channel. Time now for Uncancelled. And this is where Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. With mere hours until Harry and Meghan launch their second Netflix offensive on the royal family, right thinking Brits are still reeling from disgraceful scenes like this dripping with contempt for our late queen and the country. I mean, Americans will understand this. We have medieval times, dinner and tournament. It was like that. Like I curtsied as though I was like, Pleasure to meet you, Your Majesty. Now, given the level of offence, it's unsurprising there have been calls for the Sussexes to be stripped of their Duke and Duchess titles, with Tory MP Bob Seeley confirming on the show last week he's planning to bring forward legislation that would do just that. Critics, however, don't want Harry to revert being a prince as his birthright, which would mean referring to Meghan as a princess. But our very own Nana Aquir wants to change even that and is proposing a referendum to ensure the radical move goes through. Nana Aquir, great to have you here. We've had the Brexit referendum. You say we need the Megxit referendum. Well, thank you for having me, Dan. Absolutely. I mean, look, this is disgraceful. I would go as far as to say that they are committing treason. It started with them trying to soften us up with the old love story. Then they started sort of going on and talking about how it was all about race. She apparently had the talk. She didn't have the talk about being black. I've never had the talk. I don't know what she's talking about. Then it was little digs about the British people telling us how we don't hug. She's only been, she was only in the country for about 18 months. Then it was digs about the Commonwealth. Then it was digs about the Queen, our traditions and curtsying, mm. which was disgusting. And now she is going on about how the press have apparently made the set stories about her and all. Look, the long and short of it is that this woman, the only reason why people do not like her, they try to set the narrative that was about race. The reason people don't like this woman is frankly because of the way she's behaved. The awful things that she's said, it's not to do with what the press said. She went on about climate preaching. People were disgusted by it after she'd taken a series of private jets uh, El with Elton John, well, I don't know, some concert or something. Then after that, she started going, do you remember the Tom Bradbury documentary thing she did? Oh, yes. And it, she, she was around people who had limbs blown off through landmines. And all <laughs> she could say is, nobody asked about me. <laughs> this woman is delusional, self-obsessed, and she's dragging Harry down with her. And frankly, they are a disgrace to this country and they're trying to bring this country down. So I would say that we need to have some sort of referendum. I don't just want his titles to go because then she'll be referred to as Princess Harry and he will be Prince Harry. He should have his title removed as well. I think if you commit treason, your birthright can also be removed. I think it's totally out of order. So, so, and you, uh, Nana, want a public vote, so, because I guess politically this is a hot potato, you, you put it to the public, who at this point I think would be very unequivocal, actually, in wanting to strip Harry and Meghan of their titles. Because they hate the royal family. You know, they hate the royal family. Why on earth do they want to be connected to it? It's just bizarre. Well, we're paying for them. We, we were paying for them to have this privilege. Now they've gone off somewhere else, they're using their advantage to, uh, and the royal family to make money. And they're dissing the family at the same time. And it would appear, I would say, watching it, in my view, they want to bring down the monarchy. That, to me, is treason. I would like a referendum. 
or whether they should keep he should keep even his birthright. I, I think, think you're completely are, right that they are trying to bring down the monarchy, Nana. I really feel that. And what infuriates me is the complete lack of evidence. So you have this trailer today, Nana, and she pulls out her lawyer uh, to say the royal family and the media were at war with her. And then she pulls out her best mate uh, to yeah. parrot her talking points. Where is the evidence? The lawyer says there's evidence. Show us the evidence, because I really feel like, Nana, it is now time to put up or shut up. Well, I'd like to see. I mean, obviously, these next three are coming out. I mean, I, I will be watching it, frankly, because I have to, but also because I want to see if she's actually got anything different to say. I mean, there's nothing else coming out there but a constant, consistent onslaught against the British people and against the monarchy and against this country, a country that she only stayed in for around about 18 months, and I would like to see them both stripped of their titles completely. You, you don't have an absolute right to a birthright if you diss the very place that that birthright is given to you. King Charles has to toughen up a bit, doesn't he, yeah. Nana? Yeah, he needs to do something about it. I don't know what know. he'll do. He's got the coronation. I think he's extended an invitation to them already. Yeah. I, I think he's, that, that they need to start speaking. The monarchy needs to start speaking. Otherwise, if they're not careful, these two will bring them down. I know. I know. I, 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 I think this needs to be taken so seriously, Nana, because it's the damage they're doing around the world, too. Mm -hmm. Because you know what most of the woke media is like. As soon as you say racism, the feeling is that it can't even be questioned. Yeah. I mean, what does she know? She was here for 18 months. I've traveled. I used to live in America. America is one of the most racist places that you have ever, I've ever been to. I would say it's probably the most. It's completely divided. And in this country, there is a, a wonderful level of multiculturalism. I know that some people say that doesn't work, but it, it's beautiful the way that people in this country integrate. She hasn't got a clue. She was here no. for less than... Right about and she months. didn't bother to find out, Nana. No. She, she no. barely left her palace. She barely left Frogmore Cottage. She didn't want to do the hard work. She wanted to be treated like a celebrity and waited on hand and foot. And when she actually realised, oh, holy heck, it's not all that glamorous being a royal. You've got to go up to Nottingham. You've got to open the community centres. You've got to meet the leaders. She wasn't interested. But look, Nana Aquil, what a great idea. The Megxit referendum, I, I, I'm supporting you with it. And of course, Nana back on GB News this Saturday and Sunday at 4 p.m. Nana, thank you so much. Uh, but it's time now to reveal today's greatest Britain and Union jackass. My superstar panel return, Dawn Neeson. Who's your nominee for tonight's? Uh, let's do Greatest Britain first. Greatest Britain. her money where her mouth is and opening, uh, opening a centre for abused women in Scotland um, where women's rights are being eroded, ironically, by a woman. Yeah, she won last night, actually. She won last night, but will she have a second go? I guess it depends who Adam Brooks is going for. My Greatest Britain is MP Andrew Bridgen for highlighting the vaccine harms in Parliament and, more importantly, now getting the mainstream media talking about myocarditis and the other side effects that do affect many, many people. Yeah, no, really important. He's actually going to be with us on this uh, next week. Ashley James, your nominee. Mine are the incredibly brave people on the fishing boat who um, were responsible for saving the lives of over 30 of the human beings that were involved in the catastrophe that happened in the channel. I just think it's extraordinarily brave and it took them two hours to rescue people, and it's because of that that we only have four people dead, although obviously that should be a lot less, and it was uh, completely avoidable. All great nominees, actually, but I'm going to go with Adam Brooks and Andrew Bridgen because he was very brave. You know, he was very brave. Uh, as soon as you talk about this in, in Parliament, everyone wants to run away, uh, but I think the tide is turning. Union Jackass time now. Dawn Neeson, your oh, money. Oh, this one is not going to do many favours. I'm going to nominate uh, the um, <laughs> Paul Weller <laughs> um, because he's given an interview recently, Dan, where he's saying he doesn't understand what all the fuss about uh, the passing of the Queen was about. He didn't what did understand he say? why so many people were getting upset. He just didn't understand the fuss about it. He goes, why is, why is everyone making such a fuss? Oh, <laughs> I, I, me neither. What a disappointment. Adam Brooks, your nominee? Mine is Mick Lynch uh, for carrying on these strikes. Mick Grinch, I like to Mick call him. In, in, the, in the knowledge that hospitality jobs and businesses are going to be lost as a direct consequence of this action, I'd like to remind people 
there are millions of working class people in hospitality too, and this isn't uh, anything against working class. Ashley James, your nominee. Well, I don't think I will win this with you, Dan, but mine is Suella Braverman. Racist! Her Racist! Historic around um, refugees. Even the former head of terrorism said her language was unhelpful, and obviously now five people, four people have died uh, in the channel. Okay, so it's just, just to clarify, it's okay for, for you to criticise Suella Braverman uh, about things you disagree with, and that's not racist, but if we do it for Megan. It is racist, just pointing that out. Uh, but I'm going to go with Dawn Neeson, Paul Weller. What a silly thing to say. I mean, whether you're a monarchist or not, you can appreciate that the Queen was in our lives for right. 70 years and we all felt like we knew her and that's why there was such a huge reaction. Dawn Neeson, Adam Brooks, Ashley James, my superstar panel, thank you so much for tonight. I'm back tomorrow night. Don't worry about watching the Netflix atrocity because we are going to have all of the best analysis from the Markles, from Tom Bauer, from Lady Colin Campbell. I'll see you at 9 p.m. Good night. We are GB News, and we'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you for bringing us your conversations, for helping our great nation find its voice. We are here for you on radio, television, and online across England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. It's not the BBC, you know, you actually get your facts right. We are proud to be GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. Join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm please. completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. My name's Tom Harwood and join me 9.30am every weekday for The Briefing, your one-stop shop for everything you need to know about what's going on in politics today. I wonder if this is a deal that might need to be like the biscuits in this factory, twice baked. Is there not an opportunity here to win out against the extremes? Tom Harwood, GB News. What are you going to do about it? Things should have been done differently and they, and they certainly are being done differently. Don't miss it. The Briefing with me, Tom Harwood, 9.30 Monday to Friday on GB News. Every morning from 6 o'clock, we'll wake you up with GB News Breakfast with all the stories you didn't know from the night before. So whether it's serious news, entertainment or your own views from all over our great nation, we're here to kick off your day with a smile. And the national media should be reflecting and reporting what's happening here. You will notice the Northwestern accents. <laughs> whether you're with us on TV, radio or online, every morning it's breakfast from 6am. Hope you can join us. We are GB News, right across the nation. You can get us on television, on radio, on digital. We're absolutely everywhere. Amazing! You see, amazing! You remind me of me and the European Parliament. <laughs> but here's the most important bit. We are not part of the mainstream establishment. We think and speak just like you do. We are the people's channel. Magnificent. That's really, really thoughtful. Come and join us on GB News, the people's news channel. Join me, Nana Akwe, Saturday and Sunday afternoons on GB News. Expect fiery debate and passionate discussion as me and my panel tackle some of the biggest topics hitting the headlines. It's a place for everyone's opinion. No one gets cancelled, but no one gets an easy ride. <laughs> oh, she's on it, she's on it! Be ready for conversations that are fierce, frank and, of course, fun every Saturday and Sunday afternoon from 4pm on GB News, the People's Channel. We are GB News, the People's Channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel.
Good evening. You're watching GB News and our top stories for tonight. And we start with the story concerning the deaths of young children in Solihull, the six-year-old boy who was hospitalised after falling into an icy lake in Solihull, has died, we understand, meaning four children in total have lost their lives in that tragic accident. The little boy had been in a critical condition since being rescued from the icy waters of Babs Mill Lake. West Midlands Police said they couldn't comprehend the enormity of the pain the families must be feeling, but added further searches of the lake have now been called off. Well, also in the news this evening, a prolific offender who murdered a law graduate in East London in June has been sentenced to life in prison and ordered to serve a minimum of 38 years behind bars. Jordan McSweeney, who'd only been released from prison nine days before he killed Zara Alina, pleaded guilty to her murder. He refused, though, to leave his cell and attend court for sentencing, saying he didn't want to watch video evidence of his actions. Mr McSweeney was caught on CCTV following other women before attacking the 35-year-old as she walked home from a night out in Ilford. After sentencing, Miss Alina's aunt said the family live with profound loss. Sarah was the light, the warmth, the bird song, the laughter in our family. We live with a profound loss each day. And each day we are destroyed a little more. Well, a search operation in the English Channel has ended after a small boat capsized earlier today, resulting in the deaths of at least four migrants. 43 others were rescued, and GB News was told others may still be missing in the, fallen, in the waters, having fallen overboard. In a joint statement tonight, the Home Office and France's Interior Ministry say they worked side by side in a coordinated response. Around half of Britain's rail lines were closed today as RMT members staged their second day of strikes across the country. Thousands of workers at Network Rail and 14 train companies walked out, leaving some parts of the UK with no train services at all. It's part of a long-running dispute over paid jobs and conditions and after the RMT rejected an offer of a 5% pay rise this year with another 4% next year. Football and in Qatar, France have won their semi-final match against Morocco. Theo Hernandez's volley gave France the lead after five minutes. Mbappe's second-half shot deflected into the path of Randall Colomwani for a tap-in to book their place in the final. The defending champions will take on Argentina on Sunday. You're up to date on TV, online and DAB Plus Radio. You're with GB News, where now it's time for Headliners. Welcome to Headliners. 